Good day, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Long Days. We got the live chat going as usual. It's a jar of pencils. We need a couple chicks in there right now because it is a penis march, a sausage fest, and we need a couple of calamari to diversify the situation. Is math racist? Tune in. We will find out. I sure think so. I think it's racist against dumb Greeks who have podcasts now but who struggled in high school. Me, I'd like my god damn grades changed retroactively now that I know I was being discriminated against for being a an idiot. God, can we bleep these curses? It demonetizes us too early. Joel Epstein, my boy. What a goddamn headliner he is. The kid is doing arenas with other people's material. Can someone write some new material, guy? You're reading material from 2,000 years ago. It's an old road act. Put your puppets away. Write your own Bible. Joel Olstein, one of my favorite stories we will talk about. A lot of money found in the wall. We'll get to it. Money that was reported stolen that was found in the bathroom. Makes you go, hmm. What else is going on? A nice little Zoom call from a CEO that uh, fired 900 people from his company and he was pissed. We'll take a look at that. Guess who's back? Jason Voorhees herself. Hillary Clinton back teaching master's classes, reading what would have been her acceptance speech. Well, guess what? She cried. Are those real tears or are those crocodile tears? Because she's a shapeshifter. You tell me. We will watch that. Um, there's a $650 million uh, weapon sale to Saudi Arabia that tried to be stopped in the Senate. Guess who's behind the sale? Your good old buddy, Joey B. Why are we, why are we selling so many weapons to Saudi Arabia, who's always shady, who probably was behind 9-11? I'll tell you why. Because it's what we make best, and we need money right now, guy. Are you kidding me? Whoever wants to buy weapons, Call me. The U.S. government is about to become a small business shot out on this show and say, call this number if you need to buy weapons because we need money and we know you need guns. We don't care about the morality of your civil war. What else is going on? Looks like uh, we have a pedophile who was caught by an amateur pedophile catcher on YouTube. Turns out he was actually an executive at Sony. Very funny. I mean, imagine that. You rise all the way up in the world to become an executive, probably making a million dollars at Sony working on PlayStation, and you get caught by some 18-year-old from Jersey City who runs around with Drew in a camera saying, what were you thinking, my guy? And it just ruins your life. Guess what? Debt collectors can now find you on social media. Nowhere to hide, baby. Know where to hide. The debt collectors are coming. The Omicron is coming. It's all coming. And when I was jerking off last night, I was also coming. This is Long Days and what's the Dulles? All right, guys, before we start the show, I just want to let you know about my upcoming stand-up dates. Come see me live on the road. I'll be at Mohican Sun at Comics December 16th through the 18th. I'll be at the House of Comedy in Plano, Texas, January 6th through the 8th. I'll be at American Comedy Company January 20th to the 22nd um, in San Diego. I will be in Tampa, Florida on February 10th at Side Splitters. Get your tickets. February 17th through the 19th, I'll be in Edmonton, uh, Canada, 17th through the 19th, um, and 24th to the 26th in February, I'll be at the Comic Strip in New Windsor, and the Comic Strip in Edmonton, like I said, 17th, 19th, March 3rd to the 5th, I'll be at House of Comington in Bloomington, uh, House of Comedy in Bloomington, Minnesota, that's March 3rd through the 5th, and then San Antonio, Texas, March 24th through the 26th at LOL Comedy Club. And then House of Comedy in Phoenix, Arizona, 
April 14th through the 16th. Jared Harbin will be with me for some of those dates. So get your tickets, GiannisPappasComedy.com for Phoenix, San Antonio, Bloomington, New Westminster, Edmonton, Tampa, San Diego, Plano, and Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. Sign up to the Patreon, patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days for your weekly bonus episode and additional content. And listen, go to iTunes, the Apple Podcast app, rate and review it, tell your friends about it, and let's start this show. So there you have it. I think we probably demonetized ourselves about three, four times there in that opening. We may put a little uh, whistle over it that Jesse does. What's that sound effect you do over there? It's a bell. We may throw some bells over there to see if we can get that little green dollar sign to come up over that yellow sign. The ye They give you a yellow sign when they give you limited monetization. It's sort of like a slow down. They're telling you slow down, Yanni. Yanni, slow down. You don't have to mention fuck within the first 30 seconds. You can try to clean it up, okay? Like Bill Cosby says, clean up your act and dirty up your life, all right? That's the way you want to live. If you want to have a good run in this country, you want to just talk clean and live rapey. Jared Harvin's in the studio. Jesse Scuturo, hopefully his mic will work. I get it. Um, also, I want to say this to my fans. I keep getting a lot of repeat accusations that I am unofficially sponsoring Just For Men because my hair is uh, not gray. I don't put any hair dye in my hair. This is a good old natural Greek genes. It's not my fault that my genetic lineage is better than you, okay? I may be older than you, but if you look at our blood numbers, I'm 10 years younger because you fat fucking American circles will be dead at 55 and my good old Mediterranean diet Greek genes will keep me here way past my welcome until my mind goes like my mom and I'm sitting in a fucking dementia ward just playing with my teeth. Come on, man. But I'll still be here. I will outlive you. Because Greek minds give up a lot longer before the bodies go. Because if there was a thing of working out your body, who's that guy? The 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 former Marine who like runs and shit. David Hoggins. David like Goggins. Put, David Goggins puts yeah. himself in the hospital and stuff because he works out too much. Mm -hmm. If there was a version of that for your mind, it would be any Greek on the street running through every single conspiracy theory he could get his freaking brain cells on. So we overuse our brain, and that's why we get dementia. There's David Goggins. He went from fat to cute. And uh, a little excessive. I would say a little excessive. You know, when he does his videos, David Goggins, he's like, here I am. So somebody, first of all, he's got someone running with him because he's always got a camera available. Yeah. So I don't know if that guy's jogging next to him or if he's just on a bike or whatever, or if he's just pretending to be on mile 867 when he starts his video because he's like, here I am. Stay hard. This is day four of my Forrest Gump run. Okay. My knees don't work. My gallbladder's been removed. I shit myself and I just piss blood. But here's the point. Okay, I was once fat. Life's hard. You got to stay hard. Work hard. I'm inspiring to you. And I curse a lot. And I'm out. And it's like, okay, David Goggins, I appreciate the fact that you lost a little weight. Okay? But uh, other people have to work nine to fives. Mm -hmm. They got to show their kids Coco Melon. And we don't have time to run a fucking marathon on a Tuesday for an Instagram video. Where's the limit? Yeah, where's the limit? And also, you know what? I'd like my pee to be clear or yellow. Mm-hmm. I don't want to hear stories about how you got you were so hard that you peed blood. You may be going a little too hard, stay hard guy. Yeah, he's in shape, but his toenails look like oyster shells. Yes. I mean, his toenails are in bad shape. His feet are wrecked. I think he's had two knee surgeries. Yeah. I remember one video I watched where he actually got sick, like threw up or passed out, and then he finished the race after that. And at that point, you want to go, you've made your point. Mm -hmm. I think you've made your point. Okay, you're you're a hard guy who's running from something. You got some. Anyone who runs that hard is running from something. Yeah. Nothing keeps you motivated past mile seventy nine or something than maybe a molestation in Catholic school or your father coming home drunk and putting hands on your mother. Somebody put hands on somebody, and there's some demons that you're running from, or you know you really, 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 really want to do cocaine bad, and you're in recovery. And the only thing that can can distract you is just uh, a few days running until you bleed. Yeah. <laughs> people who people who are addicts, they furiously want to do drugs. So imagine going through your whole life every day, every second of every day, just going, "God, I 
really want to do drugs, you can't just enjoy like a conversation with somebody. You got to go, your conversation is interesting, but you know what's a lot more interesting? When I used to do eight balls. <laughs> and so I'm trying to pay attention, but unfortunately your conversation's not going to cut it. What I'm going to need is 16 Red Bulls and to go run 14 marathons until I drop dead and pass out to distract myself from how very bad I want to get high. Yeah, when you're a drug addict, you just do things passionately. Passionately to distract you from how passionately you want to get fucked up. Yeah, why do you think Rob's Mental Playground was painting those pictures like that? Exactly. Rob's Mental Playground. If you don't think that's a guy that used to do K2, you're sadly mistaken. Rob, we know you fell off as a small business uh, shout out because you fell off the wagon. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and that that money that you were uh, using to be a uh, shout out on the show just it went to what you call the white lady bond. <laughs> Someone says uh, CEO of Bang looks like a dude who missed the Coke days, so he made a fucked up energy drink. Yeah, the the energy drink commercials couldn't be funnier. It's like anytime you turn on any energy drink commercial. It's always some guy who's like parasailing, you know. It's funny how these drug commercials are always like completely removed from what the drug is. It's like you see a Cialis commercial. It's some guy in a kayak on a river or uh, you see some uh, antidepressant and then it's just some uh, like woman like frolicking with her kids. Yeah. You're like, you know, like what does this have to do with that? Or somebody just like on a horse it's on a horse, and then it goes like, you know, uh, yeah, it, it, are you compulsive? Try this. It's like, I, I, who's compulsive about riding a horse? Yeah. It's the same thing with energy drinks. It's like every Red Bull advertisement is just some guy jumping out of a fucking helicopter or, uh, you know, doing some extreme sport on like a BMX bike. And I've never met one person who ordered a Red Bull after they did like a BMX competition. Every single person who orders a Red Bull is a former addict yeah. at a bar with you. And the only thing that they can drink that reminds them a little bit of cocaine is uh, like cocaine light, which is Red Bull. Yeah. So just make an accurate commercial <laughs> where it's just three fucking addicts that walk into a bar with a guy who isn't an alcoholic who orders a real beer and then goes, what are you guys drinking? And all three of them go, we can't just give us Red Bulls so I can feel. Give me my methadone of alcohol. Yes, yeah, for addicts, man. If you drink it Red Bull, you're not not drinking it to stay up to fold your laundry. No, you're not. <laughs> you're doing it to uh, just try to get a little hint of a reminder of what the good old days used yeah. to be like. Who is more likely to be president next, Candace Owen or Dwayne The Rock Johnson? That's a question coming from Hub Cop. <laughs> That one could go either way. I'm going to say Dwayne. I think he's just got a bigger following. At this point, I think it just depends on who has a bigger following. You know? Uh, Omar's Wilds in the chat. He says, more like because he was losing money sponsoring in long days. Oh, he's still talking about um, about uh, Rob's Mental Playground. Um, you know, Omar, I don't know if that was a compliment to my show or a diss to my show. But I don't think you even know the difference because there's a reason your name is Omar's Wild. Yeah. Okay, Omar's Wild is such a fan of the show, he turns people off by saying, come join the discard where we can be openly homophobic and racist without censorship. <laughs> Remember that from last episode? And I said, I don't know if that's the best way to sell it, Omar. That's not the best promotion for long days, but it is a good promotion for the KKK. It is a great promotion for the KKK who just took up our last spot on the, on the <laughs> small business shout out. <laughs> what do you think they're doing now, the KKK? You think they should, uh, like, the KKK... What if they had like a sheets company? Like, what if their sheets were incredible? Like, what if the what if what if the KKK? What if like the KKK was like, all right, look, racism's out. Okay, we got to make a living. What are, what are we what 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 are we affiliated with? Sheets, and then they just went on a mission to manufacture the most comfortable fucking sheets on the planet. Do you think hipsters would buy it? Ironically. And, and, and people would secretly buy it just for the comfort level. Can you separate the art from the artist is my question. I'm not sure if you can, but... Would I, you buy the KKK sheets? I'm talking about if they were comfy wumpy. Maybe not, if it was Egyptian comp, uh, cotton, because then I'll be supporting people from Africa. Right. So you'd have to have some... Yeah. But see, you know, the KKK could just create a mask that's also a hoodie. 
<laughs> you know, so it's just an all in one, you know, it's like a sham wow. You they know? could do that too. Cause I mean, yeah, I'm trying to think what if the KKK transitioned to business because racism just wasn't paying the bills anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's tough for the KKK. They used to have like guys with jobs in it now. Now you look at a KKK rally. It's like, I don't even know if a lot of those guys can fit into those sheets. Mm -mm. They got to get like king size sheets don't even fit on those. Yeah, kids. those guys don't have a job union. So that the KKK is the only union they have. Yeah. And a lot of those fucking uh, racist kids are just fat. Mm -hmm. They're big, fat people. Part of the part of the reason is because they just come from the American population. The other part of the reason is because in order to have this much time to dedicate to a hate group, you got a lot of time to sit around and eat. And also, if you're joining a hate group, it just shows you you don't make good life decisions. Yeah. So I, I assume the groups you join are also bad decisions. The KKK is a whites only discord. Yeah. You're not going to meet a guy who joins the KKK and then the rest of his life, he's just on point. Yeah. You're not going to meet a guy who joins the KKK, especially 2021. And then you look through his phone and he has all his meetings scheduled out. Yeah. Yep. You're not going to see a guy who joins the KKK who has all of his bills uh, consolidated on an app mm -hmm. where they're paid off on time. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I would say probably obesity and being in the KKK go hand in hand. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. It would be like a mass company. Mm -hmm. This could be a time where they shine. Yeah. Like during the pandemic, they could have made like masks. You know, they could have made masks, KKK masks. You know, the best way to get rid of things is you got to change them. You got to like, you know, you got to like, like you got to just a different take, direction. you got to like emasculate the KKK by taking it. Like yeah. there should be someone who created a company and made it like scented candles and called it KKK. And so it was <laughs> only bought by like waspy college girls who wanted to put it in their dorm room. And so you just steal their identity. So they keep trying to call themselves the KKK. And every time they do, everyone's going like, are you referring to the scented candles? And they're like, no, God damn it. We're the KKK. We're rough and tumble and we fucking chase black people. And like, I'm pretty sure you're a candle company. Yeah, the only hope that the KKK has is if an R&B group names themselves the KKK. KKK. Uh, S SWV. A SWV. SWV KKK. Yeah. If, if we were to take the KKK and make it a black R&B group, would it be like, what would be three good black names that start with K? Uh, First of all, that would be right away you're getting press. If you start an R&B group and you called it KKK, it's funny right away. And I think that that would kill what the KKK means, because mm -hmm. then the KKK would be known as an R and B group. Yes. Yeah. You got to go, Kiana. Kiana. Let's go, Carissa. Carissa. Uh, Kiana, Carissa, and Keisha. Let's go, we go Keisha, or we could just go like out of no. Out of Kamala. Loop, and we could just go Katie. Let's, Katie. Let's let's throw them for a loop and have a white name. You got one white girl in there. So who, we get the KKK to listen to them and they see Katie like, oh, maybe she's white and she turns out to be black. Ah, then you got another hot story in there for some more press. Yeah. You got to make a scene these days. You catfish the KKK. You catfish the KKK and also you're creating a spectacle. Um, Katie, racially ambiguous. Is she white? Is she black? Yeah. You know? And then that's another story. And then the KKK is absolutely obliterated. What do we got here, Jesse? These are black names. Bla oh, uh, let's have a little fun with some black names. Uh, Kenyatta, that's a good one. Kenyatta, mm -hmm. that's a goodie. Kincaid, Kincaid, that's, that's a name. I of mean, a, that's a white dog name, but yeah. I'll, I'll give you that. It's also like the most commercially famous horrible painter in the country. Kincaid? He has like stores in the mall. Uh, Thomas Kincaid, right? Mm -hmm. He just paints like <laughs> he paints like. <laughs> He paints like these Bob Ross kind of like very uh, cozy outdoor scenes of like a cottage with smoke coming out of. People love him. People, I mean, he, dude, he's like a. How much money is Thomas Kincaid Millions. worth? A guy's worth. He has like. The, you'll go to like a mall and you'll see like a candy, uh, a Yankee Doodle candy candle store, and yeah. then next to it will be a Thomas Kincaid store where you could just buy all his paintings for like two hundred bucks, and they're just repercussions, uh, re reprints of his paintings, right? So Thomas Kincaid, uh, these are black names. Kemper. I grew up with a kid. These were my two favorite black names. I grew up with two kids named Science and Wise. And that was not, that was not, those were not like pseudonyms. That was not like, those were not given names. Those were, those were government given. Yeah. Those are on the birth certificate. He was like, my name is Science. This is my brother Wise. And I was like, your parents got creative right there. It's creativity. This is my cousin Geometry. And then that's my other cousin Anthropology. Their parents named them after what they want them to excel in. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I'll be honest. These two kids did not excel in science. Maybe wise. But that's the power of black faith. You know, you're going to speak it into existence. Exactly. 
Well, you know, I also have a friend, a black friend, who named his daughter Jordan after Michael Jordan, and to the best of my knowledge, that didn't materialize either. I think you're doing... Okay, yeah, but maybe she's going to have a betting problem. She may have... <laughs> Maybe she's going to have a betting problem, or maybe her eye whites are going to look like an egg yolk. So either way, right. it, might, it might come true. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of pressure when you name someone after someone famous, you know? You know, yeah. it's a lot of pressure because the kid grows up and he's like, that's who I'm named after. Cal Ripken Jr. Cal Ripken Jr. Yeah, mm. I mean, but some of them do make it work. Ken Griffey Jr. made it work. Yeah. He excelled past his pops. Um, so did we find all the black names starting with K? It's not that many. Funny enough. K names for boys. Kevin, Caden, Kingston, Caden. Cash. Cash. I know a girl named Cash. Yeah, Knox is not a black name. That's a wasp name. Kason. That's a good black name. Kason. Kason. Yeah. yeah. Jason, very white. You change the J to a K. Kason. Kingston. Yeah. Kyrie. Uh, Kyrie, of course. Carson with a K as opposed to a C. Uh, Carson, again, that. that's a wasp name, but I guess if you put a K there. I, I don't know. Killian, that's a that's an Irish name. Kyler, like Kyler Murray. I did not know that was a black name, but all right. All you have to do is put a lot in front of it. Yeah. So it'd be like La Carson. Yeah, or if you take any word and uh, put a Y. Yeah. If you take any letter, any name and put a Y. Kyrie. If you take Larry, Lyrie. Yeah. Yeah, Lyrie. Yeah. Or t t uh, Timey. Le, you just got to put the leh. Well, black people love French people. Yeah. That's how I know. <laughs> That's a shout out to the French. <laughs> Somebody just said the KKK should get into the NFT market. Very Two acronyms. Very good. Yeah. I like it. Uh, MAGA sheets only available in white. <laughs> I'm going to name my kid NFT. That way nobody will know what the hell he does. That's a good joke. That's a good joke. You're like, yeah, what's your kid's name? NFT. It's like, what does he do? It's like, none of us really get it. <laughs> We're just going along with it. Whatever he says he's doing, I just support him. You know, I just support him. So, um, speaking of science, um, let's get to this math is racist story. Maybe we could pull this up. Um, this is just an area where the Chinese are just dominating. They're just dominating. I posted on my Twitter, I think it was a picture, maybe you could find it, Jesse of all the math teams that were competing globally. And so it was like Australia, the United States, Canada, China, maybe another couple of countries. The funny thing is every single member of that five to seven member team, I can't remember, they were all Asian. They just dominate. Um, I'm not sure. I'd like to believe that math is discriminatory. Because I was horrible. I'm so bad at math. I have to sneak. Sometimes I, I'm so embarrassed to take my phone out to do the math when I'm leaving a tip that I'll pretend to tie my shoe and I'll do the math by tying my shoe. Just real quick. I'll be like, I got to tie my shoe and then I'll have my phone out and I'll be like, okay, what's the percentage of the tip that I owe? I mean, I am so fucking stupid with math that I'd like to believe that math is racist against Greek people. But I, I have a suspicion I have a suspicion that math isn't racist. Math isn't sexist. I have a suspicion that math only oppresses fucking stupid people. Mm -hmm. That's my assumption. Stupid or fucking lazy people, I think math has it out for. Here we go. Welcome to our international math Olympic teams. Team Canada. We have... David Lee, uh, Zetsu, Zi Zhang, uh, J Jeremy Lin, Ali Wong, <laughs> <laughs> and um, and Bobby Lee. And then over there we got uh, the redhead, one redheaded white kid, one redheaded white kid out of four teams. The rest are. <laughs> That's Nathan McIntosh, I believe. Yeah, that's. Uh, I thought I was going to say it's Cheeto Santino and Bobby Lee. <laughs> I think it was Cheeto Santino going over to Bobby Lee's uh, Chinese New Year dinner. And you know, I'm being horrible because Bobby Lee's Korean. Who cares? Um, so there you have it. The Asians just dominate, dude. And it's a cultural thing. I mean, they just, yeah. you know, and that's what's going on with this admission scandal at the Ivy League, you know. Uh, you know, minorities are, uh, are are getting preferential treatment over the Asians, but also white people are getting knocked out by the Asians. So everyone's upset that Asians are really good at school. 
Um, they just crush it, dude. This there's no, is. there's no other way to interpret it. All right, math is for Asians. <laughs> math just, is Thanos, and Asians are the Avengers. That's just they're the Avengers of the of it, and um, just let them be, dude. You know, I mean, like big deal. I, you 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 don't even need to do math anymore. We got a calculator, so it's like try that one. America wins again. Um. So I don't know. Is math racist? Imagine it is. Imagine like math. Imagine math is just like a code of oppression. Math is racist, I would say. You think so? Yeah. Because every uh, every math equation I've ever done, the answer I've always gotten was three fifths. Three fifths. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I also think it it's it's fat phobic. Yep. Because when you step on a scale, the number is always high, mm -hmm. which is definitely fat phobia. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's also uh, it re it's judgmental. It might be racist, but it's not transphobic because it allows letters to be in math. It does allow letters to yes. be in math. So yes. what, whatever you are, we'll accept you. Come on in. Yes. Um, it is very judgmental, too. Mm -hmm. Like you go to the doctor and you get a blood pressure reading and that it'll give you a number. And it's like, hey, guy, slow down. Yeah. Why are you fucking judging me? OK, that number is going to be flashing in red. Yeah. By the way, a lot of people experience long haul symptoms when they have COVID. Um, I had a heart rate of 110 to 130 for close to three weeks. My liver enzymes were elevated. Of course, I had the fever. I had COVID pneumonia. Not bad. Thank God. Um, but the worst symptom that I had when I was had COVID was in the report from the hospital. They called me an obese Caucasian male. So that still hurts me. Mm. I'm still dealing with that. I, I'm a COVID long hauler from those feelings that you hurt me. I mean, I, you know what? It's, it just, when reality gets put in front of you like that, when like the, the medical community just calls you obese, you're like, hey, slow it down, dude. I'm a little chubby. But like, I'm not obese. But you know, they like to, they like to use accurate terms in science and that's why we hate them. <laughs> I think that's why we hate math and science because we don't like the truth. The truth sucks, you know? It's like the truth. Hey, Yanni, why is your show not bigger? I'd be like, ah, you know, it just started. Uh, you know, we're just getting our footing. You know, we're figuring things out. Um, and that's just a better answer than people don't want to hear the news. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, Texas size is a medical term, according to devolved biped. Oh, man. Oh God! There, I mean, the, you know, with you gone from the chat, I'm about to close it. To be honest with you, this so I think we got the best from. I think it might be close. You guys don't start bringing the fucking heat. At this point, I gotta say, I wouldn't have. It would have been better if COVID just took you out completely. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, it might have been good. Guys, I could not be more proud to announce this to you. My other show, Unleashed, brought to you by Bet MGM with me and the great OH, OHD, Olivia Harlan Decker. She is a real sports journalist, and I am a real idiot. And we have a great time. It's an amazing show. You can get it on any podcast app that you like. I mean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever. Wherever you listen to podcasts, you can get it. We're not your typical sports tandem. Okay, Olivia has a degree in digital and broadcast journalism, and I earned my degree at open mic nights, as you know. <laughs> okay, we've uh, we've both traveled the country. Olivia is working for sports on the sidelines from Happy Valley to Tuscaloosa, and I'm working comedy clubs from Poughkeepsie Youngstown to still Poughkeepsie Youngstown. <laughs> <laughs> we both held microphones for a living, one to ask hard-hitting questions to athletes and the other to make fun of them and get demonetized. <laughs> but uh, we do have in common that we're both huge sports fans and we can't wait to talk about the biggest games and the lines, etc., uh, we come at it from different perspectives, and each week we unleash on top stories uh, where we go off. I give a long day, obviously, on what's uh, what I'm passionate about, what's getting under my skin. So we always talk about the top stories and uh, stories in sports. We have a great, fun time. We discuss the betting lines. We have a betting expert come on. We have great guests every week from the world of sports. Uh, huge names athletes, um, executives, uh, TV analysts, 
uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, please listen to Unleashed, my show. If you're a fan of me, go check it out. If you're a sports fan, it's a must listen. Olivia Harlan is amazing. I love working with her. So you can catch new episodes every Thursday. They drop early on Thursday. Um, and just check out these great interviews, man. We've had Barry Sanders on. Uh, we've had incredible athletes on. Brandon Jacobs from the Giants we've had on. Uh, we had Suggs, mm -hmm. one of the greatest defensive players of all time. You might remember him from the Baltimore Ravens. Steven Jackson. Uh, Steven Jackson. Kurt we've Warner. had uh, we had Kevin Harlan on, who's her pops, uh, who uh, has called now, has a record for the most called Super Bowls, play-by-play. -play. He's called the... He works the Super Bowl. He's done the most. Uh, he's probably the best announcer in sports. He's incredible, um, uh, and all types of other people we've had on. It's just, it's just absolutely great, and it's a good time. Um, so just check it out. Unleashed, brought to you by BetMGM with me and Olivia Harlan Decker. Everyone who watches this podcast, go and listen to it. Um, so Joel Olstein is in the news. And he's not in the news for not allowing people to stay in his mega church when there was the hurricane. Do you remember that one? Mm -hmm. There was something about that. Yeah. He's, what was it again? It was basically a hurricane in Houston, I believe. Uh, and he was preaching that like, his doors would be open. And once people who were displaced, like the homeless needed a place to stay, he closed those doors mighty quick. Quickly. Very quick. Quickly. I, yeah. I mean, Moses didn't part the ocean that fast, the, yeah. way, the way those doors closed. So he rescinded that invitation. Yes. Yes, yeah. he did. <laughs> he said, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, you know, that was just what I said. Yeah. You know, I wasn't, I, I didn't mean it. It's, uh, it's sort of like, you know, when you, when you read in the Bible, God loves you. And then everyone, you know, dies of cancer. And then you go, did he mean it when he said he loved me? Yeah. He's got yeah. a strange way of showing his love. Yeah. There were things that made you didn't really trust him. And honestly, you can't trust a pastor that looks like a Hollywood agent in 2002. So he does. So I, that's, that's just a clear sign for me right there. Joel, Joel Osteen does kind of look actually for my reference for my generation, Jesse, doesn't he look like an Italian kid from Bensonhurst in 82 with like a little bit of a mullet like you'd expect to be wearing like high top Reebok sneakers and pegged Cavaricis? Yep. He's got that look. He almost has a, like a little bit of a mullet. He's got good hair, dude. Mm -hmm. yep. He's like got good Cr hair. Christian Bale, American Psycho hair. Yeah, and it's funny to watch him preach because he preaches pretty much the whole time with his eyes closed because he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing, and it's very hard for him to look anyone in the eye. You ever watch him preach? He's always like, and then Jesus said, come to the way. And then they came. And then you want you, when you ask for money, you know, just ask for it, and Jesus will provide. And his eyes are just closed yeah. the whole time. Because in his mind, his, his mind is probably someplace else. Like, Jesus, when's this fucking going to end? I want to go drive my Corvette. When can <laughs> I get out of here and enjoy my new Porsche? Look at that kid. I mean, he really does look like a. He looks like he just was reanimated from 1982. Yeah, with that hair. He looks like he got you your deal on Fusion TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the story is good. It's a good one. So that was the old story when the first red flag went up on Joel Osteen when he said he was going to welcome all these uh, refugees um, into his church so they could uh, escape the elements of the hurricane. That didn't happen. He forgot. To, maybe he just didn't give him the uh, the code on his ring lock. <laughs> maybe he just <laughs> forgot. Maybe he was like, oh, yeah, by the way, I forgot to give you the code. But he didn't let him in. Um, and this story, I, I think this might be one of my favorite pieces of news I've read in a long time. So here's the deal. The Lord has lifted Joel Upstein up so much that you can see it in his face. You lift me up. What is that? Joel Osteen is a billionaire. Ned Flanders and the heat is catching up to him. I think he's mean he got Botox or some sort. Oh, right, right, yeah. right. Osteen drives a Lamborghini because he's for Rome. I bet Joel fucks pieces with cash like that. Joel misses banging rails off strippers' asses in his Rari. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, there. that's definitely happened. Yeah. He looks like a guy from the 80s who just has a Rari. So what happened here is, I don't know exactly how long ago, I think it was 2014, there was a massive theft that was reported at one of his, I just like that they call them mega churches. It's like these kids are crushing it so good that they sell out stadiums. 
They are the like Kevin Hart of pre uh, preachers. Yeah. If you think about it, there's probably like an open mic scene, like local churches, like a little, you know, little tiny shack with some dudes preaching. Like, man, have you heard this kid? Yeah, I don't know what happened. I don't know why he didn't make it, man. Like, he's got good stuff. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of it's timing, a lot of it's politics. And then you got these guys that just break through and they just sell out arenas. And a lot of them tour too, like comics, which is hilarious. But it's funny because they're really just doing somebody else's material. It's like, come on, man, write your own shit. Yeah. So Joel Osteen uh, reported this theft in 2014. Um, and it was what, 600, 600K, I believe, or close to a million was reported stolen from the church. Now, as you know, if you want to make some real money in this country, okay, hats off to Joel Olsen. If you want to make some real money, you know, a lot of people like to cut down on the government's cut of their money by moving to Florida or moving to Texas mm -hmm. to avoid state taxes. But is there anything more business friendly than the inside of a church? It's tax-free fucking dollars. It's like Texas on steroids. Amazon, why don't you open up your factories inside Joel Olstein's house? Yeah. Just call your company a religion and you will be not taxed. This shit has to fucking end. Creflo Dollar is driving around in the fucking Baltimore <laughs> Orioles plane. <laughs> I mean, these guys are hilarious. Do you remember when that guy got caught? There's another one. We got to pull up the... Uh, we'll pull it up after the, after we talk about it. But one guy got caught and then he got interviewed by the woman and she's like... And he it was like a crazy... I can't remember his name. But I mean, these guys are in like $1,000 network TV suits. They fly around in private planes. I think Creflo Dollar said the Lord moved him to get his private plane because... He needed to better serve God by yeah. getting around quicker, and he yeah. wanted he wanted to avoid the lines at the airport or right. something. Yeah, he had yeah. to spread the word. He had to spread the word, and nothing can nothing can facilitate you into spreading the word more efficiently than just you know sleeping a carbon footprint, just skipping the lines. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that'd be funny if he was like, "I ah, understand, like I understand, I understand why a lot of the power." Parishers might be a little concerned that I spend a lot of their donations. You know, church is 100% donation based on the goodwill of their patrons or parishers, they call them, because they're not patrons. It's not a business. It's not a business. It's not a hope store. It's not a hope store where you're putting money into the basket to buy a little hope. <laughs> it's not what it is. It is the house of God. Did he go to jail? Creflo Dollar? I assume he did at some point. I think he did. Yeah, yeah. and if that's not a kid you're going to find in the Bellagio fucking casino sniffing coke off a tit, I don't know who is. You could see it in his eyes. Yeah. He, yeah. And then there was the other guy, Creflo Dollar, and then the other guy. Yeah, so Creflo Dollar, yeah, I remember he got caught with the plane. <laughs> Look, it's so personal plane. <laughs> <coughs> It's hilarious when you read the Bible and it's like, be humble, a rich man can't get into heaven. Mm -hmm. And then you go to any church, like the Pope or the Archbishop is in like a gold robe on an absolute Italian marble altar. And you're drinking your communion out of like a 24 carat gold gauntlet. And then you see Creflo Dollar and he's like flying around in a Michael Jordan Nike plane. <laughs> And you're going, something doesn't make sense here. That's Tammy Faye Baker. That was the, when they got caught way back in the day. These were the OGs. These were the OGs, my friend. These were, this, was, this was like the Richard Pryors for the, for the Creflo Dollars. Yeah. These guys paved the way. He doesn't remember because he wasn't alive yet, but it was uh, Tammy Faye Baker and what was his name? Oh, what was his name? And he cried? Yeah, yeah. What did he get caught? He got caught with a hooker or stealing money or... Jim Baker. Jim Baker and Tammy Faye. And they, they were making millions. And what did he get caught with again? Yanni's eyebrows is about to fist bump. <laughs> <laughs> Rogan needs to register his religion for tax-free status. Should have bought that one world theater to open his comedy club in. <laughs> Tammy Fumes Baker? Yeah, Tammy Fumes Baker. Joel bangs chicks with money spread on the church pews like the Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> that is a good one. Shout out, Jamma Whitson. 
Joel Osteen is the son of Kenneth Copeland and Tammy Faye. Is that true? Yeah, Kenneth Copeland's a good one. Who's the guy who got caught? Uh, what about politicians that claim to make only 100K a year and have $40 million mansions? Yeah, that is also interesting. That is what you call interessante as well. <laughs> That's a little interesting as well. But was it, uh, who was the guy who just got, do, do a look up preacher uh, interviewed outside his car by a reporter? I can't remember. Does anyone know his name? Or is, that the, is that the meme video? I Where think like it, they try to interview him and he goes, "Listen, get back!" Yes. And he goes, "Pass the news." Yes, yes, that yeah. guy. Yeah, F- let's find that one. I saw a video. I saw a video of Joel Olstein, and the guy goes, "You know, you're a piece of shit, right?" <laughs> uh, the Lord doesn't pay taxes. That's true. The Lord just don't pay taxes. Um, so we'll get to the Joel Olstein story. We're just building. We're building the environment. This is their genre. I mean, this is their field. You know, preaching, mega church preaching is an American phenomenon. You know, we go big. We go big. And mega churches, they're like the gulp drinks of religion. It's like we used to have small, medium, and large. And then 7 Eleven was just like, dude, let's create a gulp size. And that's what they did with religion they created a mega church size these places house about like 15k you could host a ufc fight in joel olstein's mega church have we found that guy yet no so while we sift through commercials what happened with joel olstein is the theft was reported like i said 2014 about 600k missing um it was investigated. I believe the FBI got involved or whatever. They couldn't figure out what happened. They don't know who stole it. There was no uh, evidence of a break-in. Mm-hmm. There was no uh, paper trail. There was uh, the cameras didn't pick anything up. I don't know what they got going on over there. But here it is. Yeah, so this, pause it right now. This is 11 minutes. I don't know where it is. Right? Oh, as soon as you start it, we'll see some good. All right. Yeah, so just pause it for a second because we're into this already. So, and I, I banged my pen against this so much, I just broke the pen. Um, so that's good. But, uh, so no evidence of it. Six years goes by. There's a plumber working on the toilet in Joel Olstein's Houston mega church. Uh, he's trying to fix a loose toilet and he pulls the toilet out and he hears just something drop in the wall. And he goes, wow, is there some mice back there? We got some rats in here. Oh, let me take a peek. Maybe I'll call one of my buddies who's a, you know, he handles pests. You know, maybe I'll hook him up with a little work. Let me see what just fell. Wow. Oh, what's this? Oh, my God. These are envelopes and envelopes of stone cold hard cash. Mm-hmm. The type of cash you can use to buy Bitcoin. What's this? He doesn't take any. He doesn't say anything except he calls a radio show and announces it happened. And I think they maybe he told authorities or something, right? I don't know. But he he, he yeah. announces it on a radio show. It's confirmed. The church confirms it as well. So it's a confirmed story that uh, the money was found and it was in the wall inside the church it was stolen from. <laughs> Which begs the question. Is the robber still living in the church? (laughs) That's the only conclusion I can come to. Is that it was a criminal who broke into the mega church, decided to hide the money in the wall. Obviously, when he broke in, he he brought he brought some sheetrock and some cement with him because he did a little drywall work. Yeah. (laughs) This guy's getting framed by Jesus because he was a carpenter. It could have been Jesus that did it. Yeah. It could have been the Holy Ghost. And that is not beyond the realm of possibility that Joel Olstein comes out and says that this was the work of the Holy Ghost. Once the evidence gets in that this was an inside job and probably leads back to him because he wanted to hide a little, he wanted to take a little haircut off the top Mm -hmm. for what you call insurance money, maybe? Because I know they don't pay taxes, but I bet you... They have insurance for theft. 
Somebody took a little off the top for themselves and hit it in a wall for a rainy day. A lot off the top. Yeah. 500 envelopes fell out the wall, he said. Yes. Uh, little kids like to put quarters away in a piggy bank. Criminal pastors like to put $600,000 behind some drywall work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, somebody came with a fucking, with a little demo tool, a little hammer, made a hole, put it in. And then patched her right back up and said, you know what? When the apocalypse comes, we'll have 600K to buy some Bitcoins with. <laughs> so the plumber is upset now because he says he watched Joel Olstein's um, latest show. Let's just call it a show. That's what it is. It's set. It's yeah. It's, set. He probably does like a seven and nine. Wouldn't it be funny if the preachers had like a, a, a clean show and an early show? Like, yeah. Yo, did you see Joel at the seven? He's like... Yeah, man, it was pretty tame, but you got to really catch him on the midnight show. I mean, that's when, like, he calls people up, and to get the Holy Ghost out, he just fucks them in the ass. The people who catch the Holy Ghost are called hecklers? Yeah, it's just a little bit more of a dirty show, you know? <laughs> to get the whole, to get the demons out of people, he just punches them, just like, it's the midnight show. Demon be gone! So the plumber was upset because he watched Joel Epstein's last sermon on television because... Um, the guy does numbers. Mm -hmm. Joel Olstein pulls numbers. And he was upset that Joel Olstein did not mention the good deed that he did by finding <laughs> the 600k in the wall. Like he like he's looking at, you know, this is one of these like good good guys. He's a good plumber. He, he probably goes to the church. He probably loves Joel Olstein. Say, "Hey, I did a nice thing for you. Guess, look, I found the crim what the criminals did." And Joel Olstein's going, "Shut the fuck up, guy." <laughs> Shut the fuck up, guy. How fucking dumb are the people who buy tickets to my show? It's like when you hate your own fan base. You're like, God, I like them stupid, but fuck what it... Not this stupid. You know, Joel Osteen was flirting with calling the guy and being like, Hey, guy, listen, I heard you found a little something. Here's the deal. The Lord told me I should give 50K to you as a reward. But the Lord also said, We should keep this between me and you and the Lord. Yeah. He said, keep your mouth shut or we're going to have some of the disciples come see you. Yeah, so have some disciples come see you because <laughs> as you know, it says, and I think they just make that shit up. You ever hear a preacher when they go, according to Leviticus 14, 16, you should shop as much as you can at Neiman Marcus this summer. <laughs> Uh, according to uh, Leviathan, 14, and they just throw numbers out and they throw titles. I constantly think that that shit's not in the Bible because nobody's going to check. The Bible's like one of those like copyright agreements on the internet where you just scroll to the bottom and you click like, I agree. Nobody yeah. reads the fucking legalese. Yeah, the Bible is Biden's Build Back Better plan. Yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely Biden's, it's a, it's, a, it's a government, it's like the fucking, it's when the uh, Patriot Act. It's like the Patriot Act. It's 3,000 pages long. It's like Sophie's Choice. People just saw the movie. Once they saw the density of the book, they were like, I'll just watch the movie and watch Meryl Streep. So I just think they just call out numbers. They go according to, uh, and they just call out their latest bingo numbers. Uh, according to 4693 in Leviathan, thou shalt not, and then they just say a bunch of words that sound ancient. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not pusheth thouest in this thou with but this thou. <laughs> and people are like, yeah, I get it. So Joel Osteen did not mention the plumber and his good deed in his sermon, and the plumber was very upset because he was hoping for the very least to get some acknowledgement from uh, this vessel of God himself, Mr. Rari. And he didn't say anything. And Mr. Joe Plumber, you mind if we call you Joe Plumber? There's always a plumber who comes into the national spotlight who's got something to say. I said his name was Justin. Justin Plumber, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something right now, Justin Plumber. Joel Osteen stole that money. <laughs> I hate to break your naive bubble, my guy, but let me put it to you like this. And this is all the people who love Joel Osteen. Let me put it to you like this. If I report that I've been robbed for 600K, mm -hmm. people investigate, they find nothing, no evidence. It's like, uh, do you remember that guy Chris Watts or something who killed his whole family? So there was this guy, Chris Watts, a horrible thing. Chris Watts, just a couple years ago. Chris Watts, it was in, I think, North Carolina or something. No, he was from North Carolina. They were living in Colorado. 
Um, so Chris Watts was having an affair with a real sweet, evil piece of puss puss. He had a family, two kids, and another kid on the way. His wife was a little bit of a pain in the ass that made him do Facebook live videos with the family and he hated it or whatever. But he was having an affair and he wanted to live with the new wife and he didn't want to pay child support. So he killed his entire family. He killed his entire family while they were in the house and he drove them out and buried them. So when the cops were looking, they were going, he was going like, whoever has my family, like, you know, he did that whole thing. Like he did TV interviews going mm -hmm. like, I just hope that they're safe out there. You know, whoever has them, please. I just need them to come home. And the cops are going, okay, we looked at the, all your neighbor's footage. We looked um, at every piece of evidence. We did uh, a dog sweep of the house. We did uh, DNA forensics. Um, the only DNA and prints we have in this house is your family and you. And uh, there's no signs of break in. Your wife's stuff is still all here. The cars are still here. No cameras have any car coming or going from the vicinity. Yeah. There was four people in this house. Okay, there was four in, one left. There was four in the house, and then there was somehow three disappeared. You're going like, I suspect you killed your family because it's impossible that anyone else killed your family. If you haven't figured it out, Joel Olstein is the killer in this analogy. The money is still in his church. So the money was taken from the safe and walked downstairs and it wasn't stolen just to borrow a little move from the Catholic church. It was reparished to another floor. <laughs> That money was caught touching a kid and they moved them to another floor. <laughs> it was a relocation job. I mean, seriously, if you come over to my house and I report a crime, I say some people broke into my house and they stole my money. And then the cops go and they go, we see no signs of break-in. Mm -hmm. Nobody broke in your house. We see no evidence. And you go, I don't know what to tell you. I'm missing 600K. And they go, well, that's a mystery. We don't know what to tell you. And you go, I'm a person of God. I'll just deal with it. I'll pray on it. Can you guys leave now? And they're like, fine. Everyone walk, goes there. And he just goes like this. He does like a nice Napoleon dynamite. Yes. When they leave. If there's no sign of anyone coming in or out, and the only person is inside, is where the money ends up turning up. Your prime suspect is Joel Olstein. And uh, Jason the Plumber, the reason why you were not mentioned in the mega church sermon is because Joel Olstein's defense lawyer said, plead the fucking fifth, baby, like Dave Chappelle in Chappelle show. I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. No, bro. How did the money get into the bathroom of your mega church? I plead the fifth. He doesn't get any credit for this story. He's a holy ghost writer. It's a holy ghost writer here. Um... You, I do give Joel Osteen credit for having discipline, though. That's a nice, he put the money away and he didn't touch it. That's what your parents always tell you. If you're going to save, put it away and don't touch it. But the ball's on this guy to offer him 20000 out of 600000 k That's a lot. He that, didn't do that. I'm saying he should have done that. But he, the guy's getting offered 20000 from, uh, I believe, the... Uh, oh, so that's a true thing. Yeah. yeah Who offered it? He's getting, I believe it's the Houston, for, the Houston Police Department for more information. But, like... Just to let that happen, yeah. Joel Olsen, just to let it happen, rather the guy that found all the money, you just, hey, yeah, I'll pay you a little off, this is, or you get to have like free service, you can come in, I'll, I'll do a master class on how to give a sermon or something like that. Like, for you to just let the 20,000 slide on by, that just lets you know how much of a dick you are with your money, bro. Yeah, but you know what? I would be pissed if I was the taxpayers and, and I was like, the cops were offering 20 grand, they were like, let's give this kid 20 grand for finding the money. I'd be like, no, your salary, I'm paying your salary. No, no, we're not giving out money for to con so more money's lost on this crime. Yeah, would you be more pissed off if you were the taxpayers or if you were the churchgoers? First of all, the, the churchgoers aren't going to be pissed off mm -hmm. because Joel Osteen is going to come up with a lit ass explanation for what happened. Yeah, and they're going to buy it. 
Um, and as long as they're getting a fire show, they're not going to mind. They're not going to mind. Like at my church, we have a sermon, and afterwards we run out of grape juice, and not, not everyone gets to eat grape <laughs> juice. So like that, I would be pissed if I find the money in my pastor's wall and I'm running out of grape juice every right. Sunday. You know, right? So as long as the grape juice is there, things are good. Yeah. I feel like, look, dude. I mean, look, Louis used to jerk off in front of girls, but that you know, if I go to see a show, I'd be like, that was a pretty good solid hour. Mm. You know, as long as the hour's solid, I'd be like, you know what? What can you do? Mm-hmm. I wasn't there. As long as you give me that connection to the Lord, you're good. Yeah, well, well, the Lord gives you like the highest cover. Yeah, that's like especially the in cover. Texas. Yeah, that's the highest cover, especially in Texas. So he's been silent on it, and that's a smart move. He's letting people draw their own. He's trying to think of what to come up with. Yeah, I guess the investigation just gets, um, as you call it, it gets redirected now. Mm-hmm. The investigation, the investigators are probably going, okay, we were looking for someone outside. Now we know the money's inside. And now they're just starting to go like, okay, how could this have happened? How come nobody heard drywall? No, nobody heard drywall work happening in the bathroom. <laughs> and you know the funny thing about criminals is that they always get caught because they're just criminals are not. They're smart enough to do the crime, mm-hmm. and a lot of them are smart enough to do the crime and get away with it for a little while. But they're still stupid enough to be criminals. So they're always cri- like, if you're gonna hide money in the wall, why would you do it? in a place that may have to have some plumbing done at some point. You'd want to do it in like a closet room or something. You wouldn't want to do it in a place where a plumber would have to maybe rip out some lines, you know? Yeah. You're and a pastor. So, you got access to a cemetery because I know you probably do a couple eulogies buried in a cemetery. Yeah. Look, hey, I get it, dude. Okay. Financial uh, CEOs and, and Shakira hide their money in Shell Corporation's off seeds, and Joel Olstein hides his money behind a little drywall work in the bathroom. C- tomato, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. It's like you want to shave a little off the top for yourself for a rainy day. Sergio Chicone in the chat says, I once hit a Heineken in my drawers while drinking and driving. <laughs> That's, that's brutal, son. Those caps cut your skin easily, son. So he hasn't said anything. He hasn't said anything. This was at the Lakewood Church. And uh, he, he did get his reward. So the plumber who found the cash at Joel Osteen's Lakewood Church finally gets his 20K. The kid could have walked away with 600K mm-hmm. if he wasn't such a dumb fucking churchgoer. What would you have done? I don't care. Look, look, if you're a Christian, right? I was brought up Christian. If you're a Christian yep. and you see 600K on the floor, okay, after you've done, after you ripped up some, what I'm doing is I'm fucking, I'm going to get a duffel bag. I'm coming back, okay? I'm saying I need to take a shower at your facilities. I would have some clothes in the duffel bag, stuff the 600K in the duffel bag. I'd put the fucking toilet back mm. in and I would ask God to forgive me later after I went to Monaco and fucked every single high-class Ukrainian hooker that was fleeing the Ukraine because of the potential war happening with Russia that I could find. Mm-hmm. And then I would say, Lord, forgive me, I'm only human. Remember, there's no point. There is no point to God's forgiveness if you don't fuck up first. That's true. I mean, come on, dog. If Jesus died for our sins, don't waste them. You're you're disrespecting what he did if you don't fucking sin a little bit. Are you not are you not pulling the 600k out of that wall and a, taking it for a spin? I'm a little bit more conscious than that. I'm going to do a little extortion though. Oh. I'm taking the pictures and be like, "Yo, if you don't if you don't come through my mom's house, give a little prayer, give a little ceremony, <laughs> you know? You know, make sure that all, all her friends, all the church ladies, all the black church ladies, they're feeling good, they're feeling inspired. If you don't do that, this is getting leaked to the police system. See, that like And that, you know, that's not ten, it's not in the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not extort. Do y'all see that? No, I don't no, see so that. No, so I'm in the clear. You're in the clear. I'm making my mom happy. I'm good, son. You, listen, Jared Harvin is a thinker. And also there's a little bit of a mastermind criminal in there too. Yes, yes, there is. Yeah, because he thought big picture. Yeah, I got cops to my family. I think critically. You think, because what? Look, I was thinking, when he said that, I was like, fuck, I was just thinking I would take the money, but then I would do it for different reasons. I take up, first of all, I'd clean off 200 off the top. Yeah. So I'd walk out with 200, mm-hmm. but then I'd take a picture and extort for the, for the rest. And I'd say, hey, look what I found, Joel. I know what you did. Here's the deal. I want you to go to Jared Harvin's mom's house first. <laughs> Make her feel like her son just pulled off a miracle, p- 
pulling in Jesus, one of Jesus' heavy hitters into her house yeah. for a fucking private holiday party sermon. Mm-hmm. But then I would say, we're not done there, my friend. We're not done there. From now on, put me on that side piece stipend. I'm talking about that mistress allowance. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about, I need a weekly stipend. Yeah, you need a I want to see, hit me, and I'm not talking about the Zelle. I'm not talking about the Venmo. I'm talking about a straight wire into my account of 100K for consulting services every month. Yep. 100K. And I add on top of that, let me do 10 minutes to open for you every certain moment. Because you got to let me open for you. Yeah. Your crowds are lit. Yeah. Let me feel that fame a little bit. Mm-hmm. That would be hilarious. The parish is like, why is a comic opening all Joel Osteen <laughs> shows? And Joel Osteen makes up some excuse for it. The Lord wants comedy in your life. Joel Osteen is just Tom Cruise in high heels and a wig. Take Jared Harvin's mom out for a nice fish dinner. <laughs> Sucks that I can't rewind when I missed the first half, but S L O K S, I'm a dude. You can watch it later and see the whole thing. That's a fact. Oh, man. It is important no matter who you are, especially during these tough times with COVID, etc. But no matter what, I am a big, big advocate for mental health and talking to somebody. Uh, Find yourself a licensed therapist. And there's no better way now than with Talkspace. Talkspace makes it so convenient for you. It's an app. You get to have private one-on-ones with a licensed therapist. Um, Who you pick, you can change. If you don't connect, you can find another one. Um, you could uh, message them anytime. Um, it really just takes away the. I do all my therapy now um, via, you know, uh, FaceTime, you know, uh, uh, facial interview on the phone, and it's just the best. Um, you can send messages 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Whatever you're going through, you you have some, and you'll get a reply throughout the day. Um, it's it's incredible. You feel like there's somebody with you at all times. So. Um, you got to try Talkspace if you're going through anything um, or if you want to just maintain your mental health. I highly recommend it. I use it. You go to Talkspace.com and you'll get $100 off your first month when you use the promo code, of course, FUMES when you sign up. That's 100 bucks off at Talkspace.com promo code uh, FUMES. So go ahead. And meet up uh, with a professional licensed therapist and take care of whatever you're going through right now. Don't wait. Don't procrastinate. Just do it. It helps. No matter how big or small the problem is, it's worth it. It's Christmas time, y'all. What a fun way to get gifts for other people, even if you want to do a little shopping for yourself. Box of Awesome from Bespoke Post. You know the deal. You get it bunch of cool different things in your box of awesome to get started you go take the quiz it's a fun quiz over at boxofawesome.com your answers from that quiz will help them pick the right box of awesome for you they release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories and the combos they send you are just fun and I enjoy it I subscribe and I love the different stuff I get I always make use of them and uh, so I've re-gifted a few, but it's, it, hey, whatever, okay? <laughs> the people who got those gifts were happy with them. So um, it's easy to sign up. It's free. You can skip a month or cancel any time, so don't worry about that. And it's very cost-effective. Each box costs about $45, um, but you get about $70 worth of gear inside. Um, the best part, you're supporting small business, which you know my show is all about. Over and over again, we talk about it. So 90% of everything that comes in your box of awesome is from a small and emerging brand. So go to boxofawesome.com, enter the promo code FUMES at checkout to get 20% off your first box. That is boxofawesome.com, promo code FUMES. Just sign up, take the quiz, and your goodies start coming, and you'll enjoy them. So... Um, Biden has pledged that the government's going to go carbon neutral by 2050. So not only are all of Americans going to be gender neutral by 2050, we'll also be carbon neutral. Let's get rid of let's get rid of carbon emissions and get rid of gender 
all in one swing. You know how they always throw things into those bills too. I bet you those bills are like the Bible or like those copyright agreements. Like nobody reads them all, Mm. like we said. So I bet you they threw that in there with uh, we're going to be completely carbon neutral by 2050. Also, we'll be gender neutral as well. And I just farted on the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) If I had a dollar every time Yanni puts his glasses on, I would have more than Joel's Shawshank Bank. (laughs) That was a real prison move. To hide the money. But I don't think he touched it. I think 600K were in there. But I don't know if anyone's counted. Um, so that's what Joe Bi- uh, Joey Biden's trying to do. He's also selling $650 million worth of weapons to Saudi Arabia that a bipartisan um, group in the Senate tried to stop. But they did it unsuccessfully um the senate rejects the bipartisan bill but then it went through anyway correct i think it went through anyway and um the reason why they're um rejecting this bill is because saudi arabia is what you call a little sketch i'd say it's a little sketch if it was a bunch of girls talking about one of their friends that they all agreed on was like a little bit of a liar. They'd say, she's sketch. Mm-hmm. I think Saudi Arabia is a little sketch. When you look back at 9-11, I think, what, a nine out of the 11 hijackers were from Saudi Arabia? <laughs> but then we go and we attack uh, Iraq. It's like, what's the dollars with that? You know? And Saudi Arabia supposedly has its paws in Yemen's civil war. And uh, we're opposed to that for some human rights reasons. I mean... Is that the reason why we're not going to give Saudi Arabia $650 million worth of weapons? Look, hard times call for drastic measures. We need some money. Government needs some money. We've handed out a lot of uh, interest-free money right now. Bailouts. We need some dough. Government's broke. I think we should have like a one-year moratorium on legal drug selling that they just tax prostitution, drugs, and sell guns for one year. Arm up the world, have sex with prostitutes legally, gamble your ass off, and do as much drugs as you want and just tax it. We'd be a balanced budget in a year. Mm. You know, if we just had a good purge, a sin purge, we would do it. So... I think the sale went through. And I think we just regularly arm them up, right? I think they're on like that perpetual subscription. Like when you get an app and you don't, you think you're just signing up for one month, but then you realize you signed up for a perpetual subscription. I think Saudi Arabia is on a perpetual subscription to receive weapons from us. Because this ain't the first time. Yeah, it went through. It went through. The Senate tried to block it, but then Biden overrode it, right? Yeah, 280 advanced medium-range air-to-air missiles with 596 missile rail launches along with other equipment and support. Yeah, that's it. Other equipment and support. I love that. That That's when, like, the reporter just goes, uh, they won't give us the details on what else was sent. So that's the only thing that was released. You know, just a couple of guns just in case someone breaks into your house. That's all we're giving them. You know, just a few weapons of war, and then we don't ask any questions. The way we arm the world is like, <laughs> it's like, because that's what we sell. I mean, the Mexican drug cartels, it's hilarious. They get their guns from us. They buy their guns from us. Illegally, of course, but I mean, what does that mean? Um, the guns are made somewhere, and then uh, they, fall off a, they fall off a truck. The guns fall off a truck and end up in the hands of the Mexican cartels that end up becoming a problem for us and the Mexican police. It all falls off a truck. We end up arming up the world. It's like that um, Clint Eastwood movie. Remember? Where he goes, he he throws a gun on the floor and he goes, pick up the gun. Oh, Dirty Harry. Yeah, pick up the gun. He's like, the gun you just threw me? And then as soon as he picks it up, he shoots him and he goes, self-defense. <laughs> so uh, I guess, you know, when you're that, you're as strong as the United States, you want a semi-fair fight. Like if we decide to invade Saudi Arabia, you want to give them a few fucking things in their hands. So it doesn't look like a massacre, Mm. you know? 
because they don't got shit without us. They do got oil. We look the other way for the oil, right? Is that what's going on, Jess? Give me the cynical view on that. Looks that way. It says it's uh, to defend against aerial cross-border attacks from the Iran-backed Houthi rebels. Yeah, sounds like a good story. Sounds like a good story. Iran is always like uh, the boogeyman in that area. Those guys have been beefing for thousands of years. Yeah. Those two factions. Yeah, dude, you don't want to give these people who've been beefing for thousands of years, like, more weapons. Like, you know, let them solve it in a game of Jeopardy. Be cool. Let them solve it with, like, rocks and sticks and hand-to-hand combat. (laughs) But we just arm up. We arm them up to make it fun. We give them equipment. And now they're ready to roll. There is no question you guys should be using HelloFresh. I mean, it makes getting the food to your house easy. No stress, no hassle, no going to the market, no picking up, uh, you know, food, going to the cash register, blah, blah, blah. This stuff comes right to your house, exactly what you want, exactly what you need, and it is absolutely delicious meals delivered right to you. You got a menu of 50 market items to choose from each and every week, including vegetarian, calorie smart, and gourmet options. It's absolutely incredible. There's plenty of variety. I absolutely love HelloFresh. The meals are are ready in about 30 minutes it takes to make them. Um, They're quick and easy, 20-minute recipes. You put them together, low prep, easy cleanup. I mean, eh. They got recipes like balsamic and fig beef tenderloin, pecan crusted salmon. Uh, They got a lot of holiday stuff going on right now, so this is a good time to sign up. They got uh, desserts as well for my my peoples with those sweet tooths. Okay, they got limited time goodies like ginger spice, cake truffles, cherry cheesecakes, uh, cherry cheesecake swirl bars, all types of stuff, and it's constantly changing. This is what they have right now during the holiday um, season. Dude, the holidays are hectic. You're going to get presents and all that stuff. You don't need to go to the market. Just start using HelloFresh. That just takes a whole stress load off your plate, and it's just cheaper, and it's more delicious. Um, You cannot lose. You save on average over $65 per month when you order HelloFresh instead of going to the grocery store and shopping. So, I mean, it's a not, it's a can't lose situation. Go to HelloFresh.com right now. HelloFresh.com slash longdays14. Use the promo code longdays14, all one word, for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. How do you like that? HelloFresh.com slash long days 14. Sign up and find out why it's America's number one meal kit right now. So it looks like um, one of Drew's lot. I don't know what they were called. The pedo hunters. I don't think it was. <laughs> it was some YouTube kids. <laughs> and you know what's funny is this story's buried. It's like Giseline Maxwell's on trial for like raping kids. Catholic Church rapes 350,000 kids in France. We can't even get a fucking hashtag going, all right? We just had two trials with three imaginary white supremacists, but we can't get a fucking trial for people fucking kids. No media attention. This kid was a high-up fucking executive. He was a vice president, a VP at Sony, and uh, he got caught in a Drew video. (laughs) (laughs) let's take a peek at the video it's fun because uh i guess you don't dress up to meet a 15 year old boy outside when you're about to uh molest him this kid just shows wait pause it what you're about to watch is this kid shows up like he's about to pick up an uber eats order check it out kid didn't even put shoes on how's it going doing good who are you out here to meet tonight, Jeff? I mean, look at him. It looks like he's picking up Chinese food. We can have a conversation or I can call the cops, Jeff. Jeff. Jeff I, can, I can call the cops or we can have a conversation. No. You want to, Jeff. You want to have a conversation? Jeff. Here I got is. your face on video, you fucking scumbag. <laughs> you want me to call the cops? <laughs> I love when he rings the bell cops. again. <laughs> you invited over a 15 year old kid tonight to have sex. <laughs> Excuse me, everybody. <laughs> Do you think he just left a bad review? You want to have a conversation? 
He went on Grubhub after that and was like, uh, "I this the fifteen year old boy I ordered was not what I expected. Uh, this order was wrong." One star. One star for uh, th- so this the group uh, give them a shout out because uh, they're doing vigilante work, but I guess it's good work, right? It's the People vs Predators account on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> It's very scary that there's this many child predators out there that enables like eons of uh, predator content makers. I mean, these pages abound. They're like prank videos on YouTube. Yeah. There's like millions of them. And um, there's just no shortage of this shit. So this guy's like, what is he, 64? He's a 65-year-old fucking executive who went on Grinder and got catfished by this predator catching site to have sex with a 15 year old boy. And I mean, he's waiting outside like it's a fucking seamless order. He's got neighbors and shit. I mean, how brazen is it? How desperate and brazen do you become? I mean, you don't think any neighbors are just going to see some strange boy walk up with his backpack and his Game Boy and they're not going to ask you questions later. You're just going to say, oh, it's my nephew. He's in from out of town. He works for PlayStation. Well, that's a good cover. Maybe he's not a pedophile. Maybe he was just having a focus group for his product. That's uh, you. It's J- Jared Harvin has a criminal mind, and I like it. I mean, just say it. So I yeah. come over here and have sex with him. I just want him to test out the new Uncharted. Come on, we need a focus group. We got a new Uncharted <laughs> video game. We got some boys over. We want to just come into my basement. And, yeah, you know. Yeah, don't worry about the cotton candy in there. That's for them. Don't worry about my. I dick want them to be comfortable. Either. Yeah. Don't, Why am I naked? Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that either. It's my house. I want to be comfortable. <laughs> it's part of the focus group. Exactly. Yeah. He could be his defense attorney. He really could. I mean, that that came out of your mouth quick. I know. That was smart. I know. Focus group. I'm just, I, 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 I am a criminal mastermind, but I do want a PS5. So, Sony, if you're hearing this, send me one. <laughs> Don't you love the look in his eyes? Like, you know, he's like, oh, fuck, it's over. He knows right there. It's yeah, over. man. What do you think he did with the rest of his night there? What do you do? Go make a sandwich after that, or you just go worry in your room? He probably went on Seamless to act like he actually ordered food. Right, to make it seem like, oh, I must have dialed the wrong number. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, you guys got little boys? I was just trying to get some sushi. I ordered a kid's meal. I didn't want an actual kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, I don't know. I think your night's ruined there. I don't think you really go in and Netflix and chill after that. Yeah, man. I think you call your lawyer immediately and say, Larry, are you awake? That was leisurely. <laughs> well, I'm going to need you, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to need you, buddy. He was outside his house like he just ran into his car because he forgot his charger. That, yeah. That's a guy that's done that before, son. That's, he was too comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the kid didn't even have footsies on. Nah. I mean, he didn't come out with any house Crocs nope. or slippers. No, nope. he, he was full feet. His feet were raw. Yeah. Which is probably the same way he was going to be when he was in that child. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> 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 Absolutely bu- uh, brutal. So um, as it turns out, billionaires, their wealth has surged during the pandemic. As most people have obviously been losing money um i say stop being a hater stop being a hater dude okay mm. people are making money dog what was that oh it's my computer yeah um you can't have this continue what are the actual numbers here the share of global wealth held by billionaires surged to a record during the covid19 crisis about so it's, they, they estimate 2,750 billionaires globally control 3.5% of the world's wealth. The top 0.01% of individuals now hold about 11% of the world's wealth compared to just about over 10% in 2020. So they gained a little bit more. They gained, what did they, they gained a percent, which I guess if you put that into numbers would be a lot, right? One percent is probably like billions of dollars. Yeah. Um, it says here they have a record-breaking 2,755 billionaires with a combined worth of $13.1 trillion, up from $8 trillion last year. That's a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, a billion, one billion is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 100K is a lot of money. Talk about billions. This is the excesses of capitalism. You know, this is... Um, this is what King Z is, claims he's trying to curtail by all this government intervention in China now in the private sector. Now, here's the thing. If we don't curtail it somehow in more of a just, transparent way, you're leaving it to despots, communist dictators to do it. 
and to have the moral high ground over you. Because all he has to do is point to this and say, see, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. That's why you see in China, my roads are clean, the water you can drink, the cops are happy, whatever kind of social program works because we took Jack Ma and we took him on a little trip for a couple weeks. <laughs> and when he came out, he had different opinions. He wasn't running his mouth anymore about deregulation. Yeah. Okay, and we can't say anything. That's like when you're trying to be the authority for your kid. You find your kid smoking meth, and then you go, you shouldn't smoke meth. And he goes, Dad, you smoke meth. And he goes, that's a good point, kid. <laughs> but you're supposed to do as I say, not as I do. King Z's calling bullshit on us. And that's why he's doing. He's saying, see, this is the these are this is the inherent major flaw of capitalism and look at where it gets you look at this insane wealth inequality go to flint michigan go to rochester go to troy new york go to austin downtown go to venice beach go fucking anywhere outside of mark ruffalo's house or downtown brooklyn and you will see that there is major major wealth in economy uh, inequality in our country and it's due to this shit. It's due to these fucking billionaires with their shell companies and their tax breaks and their hidden earnings in offshore accounts and their reinvestments into other uh, accounts, et cetera, et cetera. Other businesses covering businesses, covering businesses, corporations inside of corporations, inside of corporations. And then when tragedy strikes, as my good friend Jesse Scaturo behind the camera would say, it is a fucking going out of business sale for these people. They buy up all the fucking stocks because everyone's selling because they're panicking. Because when you make a hundred grand a month, a hundred grand a year, which is considered very privileged, in even the first world, you make 200 grand a year. Guess what? When there's a fucking pandemic and you can't work, you need to sell your stocks because your income's gone and you need to leave. So when you sell your stocks because you can't afford to be in the market anymore and you can't afford to hold your position, guess who fucking swoops in? Mr. fucking Walmart, who can afford to lose money for fucking eons until the prices come back up and then he can sell and fuck you right in your plebeian middle class ass. Am I wrong or was that fucking accurate? I agree. Right on the money. So it's just basically a nice sale for them right now. They just went and bought everything up because that's the way Walmart also puts small businesses out of business. They come into your town. You may have a successful mom and pop store that everyone loves. They come in, hey, Harry, hey, Sally, how are you? How's the kids, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, how much for that loaf of bread? They're like, ah, oh, loaf of bread is $8. You know, we got to pay all these things. Ah, oh, yeah, we love you. Walmart goes, guess what? We'll go into that town, sell everything that all those stores sell. We'll sell everything in every store on Main Street. We will completely destroy, we will usurp Main Street America, put it all in one warehouse, airplane wing type of fucking building, and we will sell it for a quarter of the price because we're owned by corporations that make their money elsewhere and can use this as a tax write-off. We can afford to lose money long enough to put you out of business by undercutting your prices until you're gone, and then we recoup that money because we're the only dance in town. It's called Mafia Tactics. Mm -hmm. I sound like a goddamn commie now. But you know, there's points there. I'm a fan of capitalism, but you have to, it seems from an outside perspective, because I don't know shit about economics, but it seems like it's obvious you have to, you have to curtail these excesses. You know, you just, there needs to be a little bit of redistribution, a little kickback to society, or else shit gets out of whack. It's like when you play Monopoly. At the end of the Monopoly game, there's one dude who's just got everything and the game's over. And you're like, all right, what do we do now? And he's like, all right, well, what I do now is I go uh, win more Monopoly games that are gonna be easier for me now because now I'm in a, another country that has no labor laws where I can pad my 
bottom line even more by using, you know, Sri Lankan 12 year olds to make my products. Yeah. And I can just keep going because there's no end to up. And that is the Achilles heel of capitalism. So now you're giving King Z the moral high ground because this shit is obvious. What can you do? Because you can't say King Z's wrong when he says that. When he goes, hey, look, you know, look at look at your country. Look at look at that. Your roads. Dude, I mean, you know, I go to Long Island. My, I fucking lose three tires every day because there's a fucking, there's holes in the streets and everyone's paying thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 in property taxes. Where does that money go? I don't know. Dude. Where does that money go? Those if everyone's crazy. paying 30, 40, and who's watching those people? Everyone's getting paid off. They're stealing the money and they're buying their own Christmas gifts. They're buying Apple phones. Apple has been extorted by King Z. Let's pull this fucking story up. It wasn't even on the goddamn paper plate, but I'm pissed off now. Giannis is pissing off the Uncle Paulie loyals. I know it. I mean, what can you do? Criticizing the current American economy should be a display of freedom without fear of any J. Edgar Hoover quotes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's uh, uh, Tim Cook. So Tim Cook was forced into... King Z was like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is what basically happened. You can pull it up while I'm talking. Whoa, whoa, whoa. King Z was like, whoa, you can't continue to use our labor. You can't continue to lose, use factories over here without giving something to us. If you want to stay here, you're going to have to use Chinese companies for your parts, mm. and you're also going to have to pay a lot of fees so that go to the people. Tim Cook just turned 18. Right. Mm -hmm. Tim Cook had to, and this, I think, happened uh, a couple years ago, and it's being uncovered now. Uh, yeah, there it is. Signed Secret 20. Apple chief signed a secret $275 billion deal to placate China. Apple's CEO, Tim Cook, forged a secret deal with China worth that amount of money I just mentioned to appease Chinese officials and improve business in the country. It was in 2016. Uh, it shows he traveled to China um, while... There were declining Apple product sales in the country. China's like their biggest market, right? Because of the amount of people there and the growing middle class. So China also felt like Apple had not contributed enough to the economy of the nation. Listen, you guys are making a lot of money uh, making your shit here. But uh, again, mafia tactics. During private negotiations that year, Cook signed a five-year agreement placating the government uh, and preserving the business relationship. And what that entailed was building new retail stores there, renewable energy products and research and development centers. The tech company also promised to work more closely with Chinese companies, meaning the government. <laughs> um, and universities, buying components and parts from Chinese suppliers and collaborating with the nation's colleges and researchers. So we're forced to buy more Chinese components so they can put them in your iPhone and see what you jerk off to. <laughs> Apple, the number one cell phone maker in China, the company makes billions of dollars in revenue in China and even set a record for a quarterly revenue last June. Apple opened a new store, obviously, in September as per their agreement. And the company has been building research and development centers in China. So China just said, hey, man, I know you think you're an American company. Fuck you. You're now a Chinese company. You're now a fucking Chinese company. You're not going to come over here and use our fucking cheap labor and our components without being part of this country, being owned by this country, giving your kickback to the government. Pay up, bitch. Yeah, he saw it coming, too, because in 2016, he tried to he announced that he would be investing in a one billion dollars into a Chinese ride hailing startup, DG Chuxing, I believe. Uh, and they said that wasn't enough. So pay up, pay up. It's now. not enough. Or you could always uh, move your factories to um, Uzbekistan yeah. where the workers are just a little more fickle. China is the mom. Tim Cook is the son. He just turned 18. The mom said, listen, 
If you're going to be in this house, you're going to work, or you're going to go to school, but you're going to pay some bills. Right. He's paying the cable bill right now. It makes you almost want to buy Samsung. So at least you're buying from the Koreans. But, or you could look at it, probably Tim Cook would say, hey, this is, you know, this is fair. I mean, you know, because then you have those countries that just like in South America who just get totally bitch slapped by American companies, come in there, use the cheap labor, export all the bananas or whatever, you know, like Dole, mm -hmm. and they don't give the country shit. All they give is the dictator there a payoff to control his people and keep them fucking quiet while we rape their resources. So it's complicated. So part of the uh, part of you has to kind of bow down to King Z. King Z, are you listening? I love you. I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? Do you think it's cynical? Or do you think it's uh, King Z's doing the right thing? Would you do that? Would you make him pay a little bit more? I thought we were going to do some lighter news today. We went heavy today. <laughs> We went, I mean, this is a long days to full effect. We better pull out a fucking story about Lady Gaga after this to we, cleanse the palate. We got we got a couple stories that we can end yeah. on. But, but, do you, but do you think that Tim Cook has the same cards that General Z does? Because General Z says you're not uh, contributing to the local economy, but can the Chinese use the iPhones and the iPads the way that Apple wants them to? They don't really have internet access. Can they even use Siri over there? Yeah, no, they well they can't. Yeah, a lot, well they can't use a lot of social media yeah. sites. Yeah, the only thing you could do is probably just log into your phone and then log out in China. Right. Yeah. So does Tim Cook have something to say about that too? You got money, Tim Cook. Yeah. Well, I'll tell and you. And you got the LGBTQI behind you, so you can do anything with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Devolved biped says King Z uh, should produce the KKK sheets in their new company. <laughs> so Kids there you have it. it. Uh, somebody says, uh, Nikki Perk says, I love how Jared Harvin refers to him as General Z. He said, do you mean General Sos? <laughs> <laughs> that made me hungry, dog. Interesting stuff. Yeah, that was more of a long day. Um, let's get into this. Uh, let's get into the, the uh, tree story. Yeah, let's do it. Fox tree story. Tell me what's going on. So the tree outside of Fox News right here in New York, right here in Manhattan, was set ablaze, was set on fire. Uh, it was hours after the lighting ceremony, the, crystal, uh, the tree lighting ceremony, and it got lit on fire. Uh, people re remarked that there was a man climbing the tree, witness climbing the tree, scaling it at 12.15 a.m., uh, and it just set ablaze, and he is a homeless man. Homeless man? Yeah. Homeless man with a lighter. Homeless man with a lighter, yeah. Was it Antifa? It wasn't Antifa. No. But it makes sense because he had a lighter because he has a history of smoking K2. <laughs> that is funny that their tree got set on fire. Yeah. Um, they always say it's a war on Christmas. So. Yeah, it's a war on Christmas. Yeah, and you know this guy does not like Fox because you know how they feel about burning trees. Yeah. On you the know right. what the funny thing is? It's probably just a homeless dude who set the tree on fire for no reason, but people are going to read into it all types of ways. Yep. It's like the Big Lebowski movie. It's like, hey, man, it's just the Big Lebowski. He doesn't know what's going on, but he just set the tree on fire, and now it'll probably start a civil war. <laughs> Kai probably just was hallucinating. He saw some trees, and he tried to smoke it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the U.S. is actually announced that they're going to do a diplomatic boycott of China um, during the Winter Olympics. So they're going to let the athletes play and go, but the diplomats, they're not going to go over there in any other capacity, which if I was an athlete going over, that would make me a little uncomfortable. Ain't nobody you know? going over there to watch the Winter Olympics anyway, Yeah, that's Let's true. be honest. I don't think anyone cares anyway. I'm not going to watch Lindsey Vaughn go down a hill. Come right. on now. Yeah, I'd only watch Lindsey Vaughn in a sex Look at her big yeah. ass glutes coming down the hill. No one yeah. wants to see that. I just want to see her in a uh, sex tape with her uh, hockey husband. Oh, yeah. Yeah. P.K. Subban. Yeah, P.K. Subban. Um, yeah, that's probably. this is probably just an excuse. So they, this is probably like when, when you tell, when you get invited to a wedding and you say, hey, I think I was exposed to COVID. You just don't want to go. Yeah, you I bet you they just go. don't want to go because nobody gives a shit about the Winter Olympics. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> you, you think I want to fly across the world just to watch somebody curl? Yeah. No, get out of here. Yeah. Well, they say they're doing it because of human rights uh, issues, blah, 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 blah. But maybe they just didn't want to go to the Winter Olympics. I mean, they're like, who cares? I don't want to be over there. I don't want to fucking go watch people ski. So that's what, that's how we respond to China. But, you know, things are heating up. Things are heating up. They are heating up in the world. Uh, 
And China's become very vocal about like, hey, fuck you, America. It's become very vocal. Fuck you, America. They're in, uh, you know, they're in Africa. They're all over Africa trying to buy airport. Like, I think one country owes them money and they were like, hey, don't worry about the debt. Just give us your airport. I mean, they are fucking wilding out. Mm -hmm. They invited uh, Taiwan to that democratic uh, summit to work on like democratic backsliding and stuff like that. And he didn't invite uh, China and Russia. So, you know, that pissed, that pissed China off that you would now is Taiwan. Yes, they hate that. That's a yeah. constant thing that they hate. Mm -hmm. um, even though we say, hey, we, yeah, we're committed to the one China policy, but also we, you know, Chi Taiwan's our boy. Taiwan's our boy. Don't fuck with Taiwan. So uh, last story of the fucking long day is another fun one. We got another group of Tiki Torch motherfuckers who uh, we like to call them the Bugle Boys or it looked like a Gap commercial. Um, yeah, this would be like a Gap commercial in Mississippi. Just a bunch of kids in khakis just walking very briskly. Everyone's talking about it. A lot of people have conspiracies that they're feds. I don't buy that. I don't know. But who knows? I mean, look at these fucking kids. Who has the time? And what are they doing? And their sign is like, reclaim America, right? I mean, who's taking America, guy? You know? There's only one threat to take America, and we just talked about them in the last story. Why don't you hop <laughs> on a fucking boat... Grab your balls and protest against the people who are really going to take over. Here we go. At the Lincoln Memorial. I mean, look at these fucking losers. They got shields. I mean, they always carry around shields. Antifa's got shields. These Tiki Torch kids got shields. I mean, these guys, before they hit a march, they have to fucking hit Home Depot first. Now, we can bet those masks were made by the KKK. Look how they wrap around their face. Yeah. Do you, can you imagine when those Tiki Torch kids showed up at Costco? They were probably going like, God, what kind of backyard party are you having? <laughs> all right, let's see these guys walk. They all got masks on, boots. What, they even brought a drummer out there. Who's got the time? You're just modern-day LARPers at this point, son. Yeah, this shit is fake, dude. It's, you think it's fake? Yeah. And there's like fucking... A, there's not even that many of them. There's like fucking 100 of them. Or 50. Or 100. I could tell because we're comics. I know exactly how many people are in the audience. No. <laughs> I know when it's a light night. I'm like, damn, that's 25 people. No, it was, it was exactly 100 people. It was 100 people. Who? I mean, who gives a fuck about these 100 losers? I could get 100 people at Uncle Vinny's. These are just all guys that auditioned for Captain America and didn't get it. Right. So there's either two things happening here. These are loser white supremacist kids, and there's only 100 of them, and they're fucking losers, and who cares? And then the other side is that they're fucking feds, and it's fake for some some reason. Jesse goes, they're, they're feds. Why? Because they're all wearing khakis? No, I don't, they might not be feds, but it's something just to create hoopla. Well, you don't. it's not like you don't have any grounds on that, because in Virginia... Those uh, very strange thing happened. Another like, and this they were caught. There mm. were like three or four kids who went outside of, uh, what's his name? The guy who won the gubernatorial race in Virginia. They went outside his bus and they stood there with tiki torches trying to frame him, like to make it look like, oh, he's affiliated with these white supremacists. Yeah. And it turned out it was like these kids from the Lincoln Institute or something. And uh, it was fake. And they were just doing it to try to make him look bad right before the election. So that did happen. What this is, I don't know. What's the point of this? What, what does this mean now? Is this just going to give fodder? Uh, you know, am I going to get another fucking, uh, you know, is just, are you going to just go on Twitter now and say our country's under attack by, uh, by, a, uh, by, by the khakis gang? By a Gap commercial? Yeah, bro. <laughs> I mean, I, are we supposed to worry about this? Like, why are we even covering this? A hundred people. The Nazis used to sell out the garden. That's 18 grand. If you could get fucking more, here's the deal. If you can get more than 300 people out, I'll even go low because 300 is not even a lot when you think about what's the population of the country. If you can get 300 people out to your hate group meeting, maybe I'll pay attention. But if you're only pulling 100 because you don't sell tickets. If your rally looks like the crowd at the WNBA game, I am not going to take you seriously. You can't be taken seriously, dog. You can't be taken seriously. And y'all doing this on a Saturday night? You ain't had nothing better to do on a Saturday night? That just lets me know you a loser. Yeah, this looks like me headlining in fucking Nebraska. Yeah. I got 100 out. Yeah. Was this you at Soul Joel's? Yeah, this is me at Soul Joel's. <laughs> There's more American flags there than there are people. It is funny that they all wore the same pants. 
Yeah, you're not and what are they doing? They just said, hey, we're just going to go to Washington and march really fast and beat a drum. Uh, who are these people? No matter. In 2021? They, 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 they're not doing nothing, bro. No one's going to pay attention to this. The only people that are winning from this are the flag makers. I don't know who makes the flags. China. <laughs> China, they're made in China. Well, we're, <laughs> we're, made giving in China. Them, we're giving all the money, son. <laughs> they're made in China. Dog, this is like, you know, I, if I was, see, be honest with you, if I was in D.C. at the mall, which is where I like to go to go to the museums, and I saw these kids, I probably wouldn't even look up from my phone. You know what I mean? It's like it's like when I walk past Israelites. I might glance up if they say something funny, but if not, I'm just continuing to walk. Yeah, if I saw 100 men wa- marching like that, I would have thought to myself, are they making a new Michael Bay film? And then I would have kept on walking. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would have Exactly. They look like extras in a movie. Wait, this one might have uh, audio. Okay, let's see. No, maybe not. No, you just got to put the mute off. Oh. The mute's on. That too. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Tell you something. Some, it just sounds like a uh, it just sounds like a white fraternity. If you're going to have a white supremacist march, you got to have at least one black person there to make sure that you're on in line <laughs> and that you're on beat. Cuz you can't even yell the same, you can't even you can't even sync up the same. You got to have one black person in there as your spiritual leader. <laughs> just like every church choir has a, has a gay uh, church leader, choir leader, you got to have that one black person that can lead you, bro. Absolutely. I mean, I don't I don't know what to make of this. I don't know what to make of it at all. Um, yeah, I just, it, it, you know. And it's nothing because we see we, we actually saw what went down on January 6th. Yeah. So this is nothing for us. Yes. And January 6th, it was, it was bad because they broke in and shit. But how many were those? 400 people? Yeah, not that many. I mean, just, I mean, you got to beef up security a little bit for 400, you know? Yeah. As soon as they, you know, the, 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 the suspect thing to me is like, why don't you just start spraying dudes mm-hmm. when they started attacking the Capitol? Your job is to spray those fucking dudes. Also a little fishy. You're going like, how come you didn't just start fucking shooting? Yeah, we're not bad an eye at this, man. It's not big enough. We already seen what the best could be. You know, that this is like when Stephen Baldwin sat next to Alec Baldwin in public. You're only going <laughs> to greet one of them, all right? <laughs> So that they didn't spray those dudes either. May, one makes me think maybe like there was some people on the inside that were like, sympathetic for it or it was a setup or that was part of it or it was just like that's right because like imagine 400 black dudes showed up and tried to fucking break into the capital i feel like they'd set off a nuke (laughs) they would just they would fucking just start shooting Mm -hmm. so it's it no matter what it is it's a bad it's not a good sign and um no matter which way you slice it uh yanni the reflect refraction from the glasses helps make your eyes look farther apart that's a great way to end. Let's go to some small business shout outs. All right, want to give a shout out to our small business sponsors. As always, we got a newbie in here, David Hines. Welcome, my friend. David Hines has a comedy audio film that I'm going to check out. It sounds wild. It's called Dick Tater, D-I-C-K, Tater. It's all about, this is the premise. Adolf Hitler is the hottest man in Nazi Germany. When he wants someone, he gets them. Dr. Mengele is the country's greatest scientist and Hitler wants him. But what if Dr. Mengele is the one man Hitler can't get? This is the pem- this is the premise. <laughs> so, I got to check that out. I mean, you know. I don't know if it's going to be on Mel Brooks's level, but we'll see. So, check out The Dictator um and uh you can listen to it on Spotify. It's called Dictator spelled dick, the way you look you spell penis. Then we got Nate Linder, our social media uh, consulting guru, natelinder.com. He offers solutions such as Google ads, SEO, social media ads, streaming TV ads, much more. Hit up Nate Linder right now if you want to take your social media uh, to the next level. If you're a business person, whatever it is, they'll run your websites, campaigns, etc. cetera. Natelinder.com. Grant Trower. Grant Trower is down there in the South Florida area for all your real estate needs. 954-591-6465. Grant Trower. The Atlantic Realty Group. Com. Anywhere in South Florida, if you're looking to move, you're looking for a spot, hit up Grant. Grant Trower. 
Uh, Chris Minetti. Chris Minetti Services. Financial services in the South Philly and the Philly and South Jersey area. Call Chris 215-750-3730 to get your check cashed with Chris Minetti. Then we got the Bronx brand. The Bronx brand.com. Check it out. It's a showcase of Bronx creativity. Really, they collab with local artists uh, to celebrate the vibrant culture of New York City and the Bronx. Um, they got cool stuff up there you can buy for Christmas for yourself. It's incredible, man. So many cool artists that they collaborate with up there. And their promo code, if you want 15% off your off, 15% off your offer, hit the promo code FUMES at thebronxbrand.com. Then we got our boy Reese Ormond. You know Reese. He's a what's the deal is type of kid. Um, techvera.com for all your IT needs. You don't have to hire uh, a whole IT department. You can just outsource it to TechVera. They will do everything for you for a great price. TechVera.com. Uh, cybercrime, cybersecurity, whatever it is, they got you back. Eastside Cheesecakes, Julia and Gregory, they are blowing up. I think they just had a, a local commercial out there in Los Angeles. I'm sorry, a, a news story on them that I saw. So shout out to Eastside Cheesecakes. Um, uh, use the pro, uh, use the code SHIPPING. The code is SHIPPING to take 25% off uh, their first two orders nationwide on DoorDash. Uh, we are going to be getting a, che a Christmas cheesecake, my friends. They're sending yeah. us a Christmas cheesecake. So uh, the three of us will enjoy it. Um, EastsideCheesecakes.com. Guys, guys, the holidays are coming up. They send this shit to you fresh. Fresh. The packaging keeps it fresh. Try these homemade cheesecakes. Everything's made from scratch. They're absolutely delicious. Follow them on the gram, Eastside Cheesecakes. Um, all one word to look at their beautiful cheesecake porn and uh, the flavors that they got. So uh, East Side Cheesecakes, we love you guys to death, man. I can't wait to get our Christmas cheesecake. Aaron Lee for the free dot US, all things music in Hawaii. <clears throat> check them out for artists, shows, whatever. You're going to Hawaii or if you're interested in music, check them out. I think we lost someone else. Oh, yeah? So yeah, goodbye to us. Uh, yeah. Oh, the shipping guy, the car guy, right? Jeez, oh, guy. no, he's still here. But I'm, I think I uh, uh, just want to say goodbye to Z Jamma Realty. Oh, Z Jamma's gone? Z Jamma's gone. Andrew Cuomo's secretary? Andrew Cuomo's secretary. Take care. Happy Hanukkah, guys. <laughs> um, so we got, of course, uh, exclusiveautoshipping.com. You're moving your car anywhere in the world, in the country. Get your free quote from Jared Z at exclusiveautoshipping.com. And yeah, peace out. It was a good run. We love you, Z Jamma. Good luck. Um, and now, there's one open spot. There's an open spot. Hop on it. All right, want to welcome our new long haulers, uh, Cyclops Cult. Welcome to the Fediverse. Let's start off with M. I think uh, you look so nice. We're going to read it twice. Then we got <laughs> Ted Marquise, then DeBob, Eric Goff, Wired Music. Christopher Heatherly, welcome. Daniel the Spawn of a Coquito Fueled Night. <laughs> <laughs> William Fowler, Harrison Brantley, Benjamin Barron, Case St. Peter, Andrew Alvarez, Tom Inman, Zachary Bompensa, Coley, Old Stink Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Lance, Old Stink Dick. That's a goodie. That's a goodie. And then we got Hunter Bell. Welcome, guys. Patreon.com slash Yanni Longdays for your weekly bonus episode. It's been a long